Now, you guys are really telling our you, message. You guys have been working on this a long time. I mean, in the 2000 presidential election, George Bush said Al Gore invented the Internet based on some comment. And now Al Gore produces a movie, and he's getting all the credit sure. for saying that the environment has been bad all these years. But he hasn't done nothing except reiterate what a lot of people have been saying for years. And, and do you think that movie has actually helped the awareness or has the actual beating of the drum of Earth Day helped the awareness or is it a cumulative effect? I, I think it's a cumulative effect. I, I remember back, uh, I used to hear about uh, what we used to call it back in the 70s. It wasn't, was it Earth Day or Ecology Day? Um, they talked about the greenhouse effect even when I was a kid. I think we've been aware of it for many, many years. Maybe now we're finally getting scared of it or... We, we so Earth Day is important to the whole nation. Yeah, it's, it, definitely. And, it, and it's an occasion where people really can think about all these things, that man's impact on, on the Earth and the environment. And Mark, uh, the, the core projects such as dredging impact the development of the estuary. Did they impact it in a positive way? I mean, and of course, you know, is, is there a negative downside to moving all this dioxin and things that you do as well? Um, it depends how you, it depends how you, you remove it. Uh, it can be if you, if you remove it in a, a, a smart way, uh, you do a lot of, of upfront research and to find out exactly where it is, then your, uh, your impacts can be, uh, can be beneficial because you're removing this stuff from the environment. You're, you're sending it away to uh, a containment facility or a processing facility where it will be treated as a hazardous waste. Um, the effects uh, can often be beneficial then because you've, you've taken this out of the environment, now the food chain. And uh, John, in your opinion, local impact, um, Earth Day on local residents. Do do people pay attention? What do we you hope find? they do? Yeah, and we can only gauge who comes to the event, and we have a pretty strong connection to the schools, and they're they're evident. The, the evidence in what they're doing makes a difference, and we know that students can take charge and own their environment and and actually get people to think about it, maybe more than the adults might think about it. So there's great promise there with the local residents from the student perspective. And Future City does a lot of work with the community, not just on water quality issues, but with lead and healthy homes and green acres initiatives. So there's a pretty, pretty strong message and certainly the, the real strength is in the multilingual capacity of Future City because People like me going out knocking on a door, I'm wearing a blue suit today and not speaking the native language and therefore I'm just another scientist. You are speaking the native language, you may not be speaking the language spoken uh, in the house though. Of the household. Right. So that, that's really the strength of, of everything we do at Future City is to make sure that we are very conscious of who the actual audience is. So it's, we can always say we're out there for the community. but if we're not really making the effort to reach them in every way possible, our work is going to just be another event and not sustainable. Mark, in, in, a, in, a, in an odd way, the Corps has evolved from a builder of projects such as dams and um, the Elizabeth River that was done here in the city to stewards of the waterway. And it's an interesting evolution that's happened in the Army Corps of Engineers. I guess you've seen it happen. Yeah, that, that came uh, again in, in my lifetime since the 60s and the 70s where, uh, you know, back in the day we just sort of went in and said we're going to build some sort of hard structure, a uh, flood control structure, or we're just going to dredge the harbor. Uh, and, and that was fine with people. And, and governments got done what they had to get done. Um, Congress gave us the uh, environmental restoration, ecosystem restoration missions uh, back in the 80s. And uh, it's taken off from there, um, kind of plateaued a little bit. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tougher sell in many ways than telling someone you're going to fix their flooding problem, which is a, a, a safety problem. Uh, tougher to get people think, thinking long term about the environment and you know, having us come in and rebuild a wetland. Um, but uh, we, we do have that mission now, and um, we take it seriously and uh, we're there for uh, those communities that are interested in doing that. They're never going to see you rebuild a wetland, but they'll see you build a dam. They'll see you build a dam. Uh, we, they are seeing us build wetlands um, up the road or down the road in Woodbridge and uh, Medwick. We have a couple of uh, restoration sites uh, uh, in their second year now. You know, they don't look like much when you first build them. Right. They look like a construction site. You're moving dirt around. Uh, when you plant them and you put up a couple signs and people finally see that, oh, this looks good. Uh, so we're, we are doing that now, and, and, and hopefully the word will get out. Those are two good news stories right up the road um, that maybe, you know, we'll want more of this in our area. 
John, we got about a minute left. How do we get adults to focus? I know the message has been on kids and young people. Can we get adults to focus or is it too late? Well, I'm not going to be pessimistic, so it's, it's never too late. And I, I think there has been enough movement on the political side that is generating the interest. So if we're going to act, we need to have the people most responsible for kind of directing people's actions, the politicians involved. And I see more and more of it every day, that it's no longer a partisan issue, that the environment matters to everybody, and therefore people are taking it seriously. New Jersey is a leader, really, in the new environmental initiatives, especially around greenhouse gases, second only really by a margin to California. But we're, we're taking a leadership role, and that's trickled down to local government as well. And we, we are prom there's a promising future ahead of us. For John, Mark, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Appreciate your insight. Look forward to seeing you during the week. Thanks. For John Dabashevitz and Mark Loka, I'm Chris Bolwage. We'll see you next week on another edition of Our City. And this week especially, keep in mind the environment.